Happy Thursday. How you doing today? Hey, I want to talk to you today about why you deserve God's best. Did you know that you deserve God's best? The very best that God has. You deserve it. I'm going to tell you why. This will change the way you think about yourself. This is good. Say this with me on this happy Thursday. The rest of my life is the best of my life. And the best of my life is the rest of my life. Everything I touch turns to gold. I am smart, I'm getting smarter every day. I am extremely talented. Everything works out for me. I am a wonderful person. Pastor Jim is a wonderful pastor. Talk like that about yourself. I am beautiful. I can see myself. I am beautiful. I can see you. Actually, I can't see you. But I know who some of you are. I know there's a lot of people watching, people all over the world watching these videos. These videos get picked up and distributed all over the place. And I know they do. And I praise God for that. There are people put them on their websites and all stuff all over the world. And I praise God for that. I want to talk to you today. And oh, and I was going to say, share these videos with everybody you know, please. I am getting so many referrals. Lady called me yesterday. Oh my goodness. She needs the Lord's blessing. And that's what we did. We broke the curse of the law in her life and spoke the blessing over her. She just had so much going on. Her life will straighten out Thanks to somebody, and I don't know who it was, but somebody referred her to this ministry. And I praise God for you, whoever you were. I praise God that you would do something like that. Because you have given this woman an opportunity to receive God's blessing and to be prayed for. And that's wonderful. So, and also make sure you call me today when you do your offerings and donations because I want to speak the word for word blessing over you. You deserve the very best that God has. Jesus said so. Jesus said so. It's all over the... Do you know that there is more in the Bible about abundance than any other subject? There is. There's more about the abundance in the Bible than there is about salvation or healing. So many people focus their ministry on healing, and we used to do that too. We used to go around and do healing crusades and stuff like that. But you know what? That's only half of it. And we didn't realize it at the time. And then one day I realized that Financial problems, poverty, is sickness. It's a financial sickness. It talks here in Deuteronomy 28, verse 29. It says, And thou shalt grope at noonday, as the blind gropes in darkness. And thou shalt not prosper in thy ways, but thou shalt be only oppressed forever, and nobody will help you. This is a curse of poverty. That's part of the curse of the law, and that's poverty. And poverty is all through the curse of the law. Poverty and lack and loss and failure, it's all in there. Read it. And we're redeemed from this. We're redeemed from this. Jesus redeemed us from the curse of the law. Read through the curse of the law. Deuteronomy 28, 15 through 68. That is what you are redeemed from. That is what you do not need to have. You don't need to put up with any of that. Because Jesus has redeemed us. Now, Jesus went into the temple. Luke chapter 13. And there was a woman there. There was a woman there who had a spirit of infirmity for 18 years. It says 18 years. 
and was bent over and could not stand up. Now, her problem was caused. She, now, she had probably some kind of maybe a rheumatoid arthritis. I'm not a doctor, although I pretend to be sometimes. She had either rheumatoid arthritis or maybe osteoporosis. She had something that caused her back to bend over. My mother had that problem, and her problem was osteoporosis, where the bones break and the back just bends over. You see people like that. But anyway, we don't know exactly what her disease was, <clears throat> but she was sure bent over. And the Bible says that she had a spirit of infirmity. <clears throat> so we know what caused her problem was a spirit, an evil spirit, a spirit of sickness, a spirit of infirmity. Do you know that all sickness and all disease is caused by spirits of infirmity? Now, when a person just sneezes or just coughs to clear their throat or something like that, that's not an evil spirit. But when a person has a disease, cancer, arthritis, heart disease, I guarantee you it's caused by a generational curse would allow, which allows these spirits of infirmity to operate in a person's life. When a person is broke, has poverty, that is caused by a generate almost always a generational curse of poverty. And that allows these, these spirits of poverty to operate in your life. And they'll keep you broke. Now you may use your faith you may use your faith to, to get your bills paid, which is what we did. But believe me, you're going to stay broke. Anytime you accumulate any money, the devil will get it. You know what it is. Anytime you get something going on, it, it'll, it'll result in failure. It always says, I have, have tried hundreds. How many times? Just different things have we tried, Mary? Several. So Mary says several. Yeah, several hundred in my lifetime, I have tried several hundred ventures to make money. And you know what? Every single one of them was a great idea. And every single one of them failed. Failed to make money. Although, on, did they look good on paper? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, she says. Oh, yeah, they look great. But the spirit of poverty and that generational curse kept us broke. Kept us... Failure is a huge part of the gener of the spirit of the uh, curse of the law. Well, this woman in the temple, Jesus called her over, and the first thing he did was cast out the spirit of infirmity, the cause of her problem. He didn't say to her, "Well, you probably need some more vitamin D." And you need to get out and exercise a little bit more, and you need to quit smoking. And you need to do this. No, he didn't say any of that. I don't tell people they need to do anything. I just get rid of the spirits that are causing the problem. Somebody comes into our church that's broke. I don't say, well, you need to get your finances straightened out. No, I'll straighten it out for them by breaking the generational curse of poverty and by commanding those spirits of poverty to leave their lives. That's how I straighten out people's finances. Amen? Not by telling them to, you know, like you, you take the Dave Ramsey course and the first thing he'll tell you is stop spending money you don't have on things you don't need. Well, that's good advice, but it doesn't cure poverty. No, the only thing that cures poverty is breaking the spirit of poverty. Just like the spirit of infirmity. Jesus cast it out. Then he laid his hand on her and she raised up. She was healed. Two steps. I'm not going to pray for your finances until I break the spirit of poverty in your life because it doesn't do any good. But once I break that spirit of poverty, I can start speaking over your finances because that spirit's gone. And God's blessings can, then can flow into your life. They can't flow into your life 
when these evil spirits are there. You can't be healed as long as that spirit of infirmity is in place. So Jesus removed the spirit of infirmity first. Then he healed her. Look at this. Go back and read this. Everything works the same way. Step one, remove the evil spirit. Break the curse. Step two, heal her. Increase the finances. Two steps. Everything is a two-step process. A two-step process. If you skip number one and that evil spirit is still there, you ain't going nowhere. So we got to get rid of that. That's the first thing I do when people come into our church. If they're sick, I cast out that spirit of infirmity. They get healed. Just We have had people healed off their deathbeds because the first thing I do is command the spirit of death to leave. There's a spirit of death there before these people die. I tell it to go. Gone. Be gone. And it leaves. I tell the spirit of infirmity to come out. Then I say, be healed. They get up. They get up. Glory to God. <clears throat> Always do that. Then in verse 16, I want you to see this. This, now you can't rank the verses in order of importance. They're all important. But this one will change your life. Jesus said, because everybody became indignant because he had healed this woman on the Sabbath. He said, ought not, shouldn't this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan has bound for 18 years, be loosed from this bond on the Sabbath day. Shouldn't this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, now let me tell you something, folks. He healed her for one reason. One reason only. Because she was a daughter of Abraham. You get a hold of that and read Galatians chapter 3. If you're born again, you are a son or a daughter of Abraham. And he's, he is telling the people in the temple that this woman deserved to be healed on the Sabbath or any other day because she's a daughter of Abraham. And I'm telling you something else too. You deserve to live in abundance because you're a son or a daughter of Abraham. You deserve it. And you need to start claiming it. It's your inheritance from Abraham. The blessing. We're going to talk some more about this tomorrow. Get a hold of this. Renew your mind to the blessing. Renew your mind to abundance. Renew your mind to good health. You deserve it. You do not deserve to be sick. You do not deserve to be broke. If you are a covenant person. Now that's from the Lord. That's not from me. That's not my idea. That's not my opinion. People say, well, Pastor Jim, I don't believe that. Well, then you believe wrong. Don't believe wrong. The Bible tells us that this woman deserved to be healed because she's a daughter of Abraham. And I'm telling you what, I used to tell the Lord, Lord, I'm a son of Abraham, a covenant person. Now you bless me. I deserve it. And so do you. You deserve God's best because you're a covenant person. Say this with me right now. I am a covenant person. I am a covenant person. And I deserve the very best of God. And I deserve the very best of God. Amen. Amen. Share this video with everybody you, you know. Tune in tomorrow because we're going to go some more on this. This is good stuff. It'll change the way you think. Amen. When you do your offerings and donations today, I know tomorrow is offering day, but a lot of people jump in and do them on Thursday. Make sure you call me today. Make sure you call me. If I'm not available or uh, you don't get through, I will call you back. Amen. And don't leave long messages. I don't answer them anyway. I don't even listen to them. I just hit the buttons. I see the calls that come through. And when they're in red, I call them back. Because I want to I get to everybody. Glory to God.